Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, if you have a little corpse in your home, swap it in for something useful. Mr. Diamond? Yes? I'd like to hire you, Mr. Diamond. Well, bless your little heart. One hundred a day in expenses. My name is Raymond R. Walter, an attorney at law. Would you mind coming right over to my office? Will you have a retainer ready? By the time you get here. Where is here? 758 East 45th Street. Just sign the check and I'll stamp in the amount with my track shoes. Then I can expect you. You could even clock me. Who knows? You may witness the first four-minute mile. I quickly bounded over to the sink, pulled out a bundle of soaking laundry, grabbed a straight razor that looked like it had been used to hack out shrapnel, Applied the Brillo to my overnight beard, and 20 bloody strokes later, I observed myself in the mirror. Wounded, sire, but not dead. By 11 o'clock, I was standing in the reception office of Raymond R. Waldron, attorney at law. I looked for the secretary, but none was to be seen. Then the door of Mr. Waldron's inner office opened, and a man about six feet tall, sporting a heavy black beard and thick horn-rimmed glasses, stood facing me. I suppose you're Mr. Waldron? Yes, uh, take this chair, if you will. Thank you. Now, uh, what's your trouble? Oh, not mine. My clients. You see, I'm supposed to give you $100 as a retainer until you speak with my client this evening. Uh, before you wave the bills around, tell me something about your client. My ethics get so double-jointed when someone shows me money. My client is a she. Hmm. Well, you certainly present the beginning of an interesting argument. Her name is Miss Mary Bellman. Miss? 28, blonde, showgirl. Very attractive. Hmm. Ah, uh, so she killed 30 members of the volunteer fire department. I like tough cases. She's in fear of her life, Mr. Diamond, and since I'm her attorney, she called me and asked me to hire a good detective. You said Miss Bellum was in fear of her life. Uh, somebody trying to kill her? I think it best to let Miss Bellman tell you. She has all the facts. Uh, here's her address, and here's your retainer. She expects you at eight. <laughs> It was close to 12 when I got back to the office and spotted my landlord nailing up my door. His eyes dropped blushingly down to his waist when he saw the two months back rent in my hand, and he hurriedly explained his carpenter work on my door as a delayed April 1st joke. I paid him off as the last board fell and then left the building and went to my flat on 53rd Street to take it easy until that evening. By 7.30, I was dressed in my best suit, the gray one that stands out from the rest because the rest are one brown gabardine that even a starving moth would gag on. Suddenly, I remembered my dinner date with Helen, so I put in a fast call and told her butler, Francis, that I'd be a little late. Then, promptly at 8 o'clock, I walked up to the door of Miss Mary Bellman, prospective client. Yes? Who is it? Uh, Richard Diamond. Oh. Come in. Have you got it? Well, I don't know. Got what? Look, how about the envelope, huh? Envelope? John said it would be in an envelope. But if you don't have it in an envelope, just kindly give it to me. Then I'll fix us a drink. Oh, well, maybe you better fix the drink first. This is it... some kind of a joke. Oh. What's the matter? What are you doing here? Who? Oh! Everything happened so fast, I didn't even have time to guess what it was all about. Someone belted me with the Chrysler building, and I went down like a loose ski in the snow slide. As I hit the floor, I felt a pair of hands pull open my coat and relieve me of my 38. The floor fell away, and I dropped into a deep black pit that smelled something like a dirty carpet. When I finally came around, it was like squeezing myself out of a starch diving suit. I got my eyelids apart, and... There, standing in front of me, were two very good reasons for wanting to go right back to sleep. Oh. Oh, he's coming around, boss. Good. I want him to see it when I give it to him. Oh. Slap him around so he comes to in a hurry. Sure. Come on. Wake up. Wake up, you hear me? 
No, okay. Come on, uh, sit up. All right. Oh. Oh, my head. It's going to be your stomach in a minute. Mm. Full of slugs, you dirty, no good gumshoe. Oh, well. Oh, Louis Hall, huh? You slug me, Louis? Why'd you kill her? Huh, Shamus? Why? Why? Uh, what? Mary. Look at her, Shamus. Oh, uh, where? Oh, holy smoke. Yeah. My pretty Mary. Tell me why you shot her, huh? You think I shot her? You're going to die anyway, Diamond. In a minute, I'm going to kill you. But I got to know why you done it to Mary. What makes you think it was me? The shotgun, ain't it? You got an empty shoulder holster. Well, that's your gun, ain't it? Yeah. I... Sure. Well, this is a gun that shot Mary. One slug gone. See the slugs in her. Oh, you got the wrong boy, Hall. Oh, knock him off, boss. He's lying. He done it. Shut up. Oh, sure, sure. I killed the girl and slugged myself, hoping that someone would come in and pin it on me. Boss, I think you're the... Yeah. Anybody in there? What's that? The U.S. Marines. Keep it quiet. Okay, Otis, use your pass key. If that doesn't work, use your head. Okay, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, the cops... Come on, Tony, we're getting out of here. <sighs> Great, but what about the shamus? I don't want to knock you off if you didn't do it, Diamond, but I'm going to find out, then maybe we talk more. Well, let's go, let's go. Right, out the back way. You mallet head, you've tried everything but your button hook. Oh. I guess maybe we'd better bust it in, huh? Okay, give me a hand. Put your shoulder against the door. Now, one, two. Hello, Walter. John, what are you doing here? I came to see a client. We got a report on the homicide. Where is it? In the other room. Take a look, Otis. Yes, sir. How did you get mixed up in this, Rick? That's a pretty good question. Lieutenant. Yeah? It's a dame. It's the dress in high heels. He spotted them right away. Who is she? Name's Mary Bellman. Hey, who called you to come over? I don't know, but we traced the call that came from a phone booth right next door to this building. How long ago? 8.15. Mm, right after I got slugged. You got slugged? Thoroughly. Otis, go call the coroner. Right. Let's see. One shot came right out between the shoulders. Yeah, when I came to, I could still smell cordite. Well, where's your gun, Rick? Well, right now, it's with Lewis Hall. Louis Hall, the gambler? Yeah, the guy who owns the Ace High Club. When I came to, Louis and one of his boys were getting ready to kill me for killing the girl. He waltzed out of here when you showed, took my gun with him. Maybe he knocked her off. Uh, maybe. Anyway, I think whoever did it used my gun. I still don't see how you figure in this deal. Well, a character by the name of Raymond R. Waldron, attorney at law, called and told me to come by and see my recently deceased client. Come on. Let's see what we can find out about a Mr. Raymond R. Waldron, attorney at law. Well, I was in it up to my earlobes again. Walt had Otis put out a pickup on Lewis Hall and his torpedo. Then we climbed in the squad car and headed for the offices of Raymond Waldron. On the way over, I told Walt what had transpired since that morning. One, Waldron hiring me for Miss Bellman, saying he represented her. Two, seeing Mary Bellman in the strange way she had greeted me, as if she expected me to have an envelope for her. We got to the building, found the night watchman, went in, and in two minutes we were standing in front of the door marked 402. Isn't there usually a name on the door of an attorney's office? Uh, usually. Maybe that's why I saw it there this afternoon. Now, uh, let us in, will you, Pop? Hey, sure, boy, but... There ain't nothing to see. We know Mr. Waldron's not in, but we want to look around. <laughs> sure, boy. <laughs> look as much as you like. Reception room, boy. Where's the furniture? <laughs> Pretty dull looking, huh, boy? <laughs> uh, what about the inner office? Well, no sense going in there. It's as naked as this. Well, it's all here this afternoon. Was there someone in this office this afternoon, Pop? <laughs> you think the boy's lying? <laughs> sure, like he said, some lawyer fella. Had all the furniture moved out, run out on a week's rent, too. Landlord's in an oxygen tent. <laughs> You're listening to Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Brought to you by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall family druggist. Right now, here's a lady with a problem for him. Every summer, it's the same thing. My children either eat their meals so fast or fill themselves with all kinds of cold drinks and hurry-up snacks. And then we have our usual siege of what I call summer stomachs. Well, ma'am, a lot of mothers have that same trouble. 
And a whole lot of them have solved it with Rexall Milk of Magnesia. Why, how's that? Well, it's a quick and effective way to neutralize excess acidity and a remarkably gentle laxative. What's more, because of its special formula and exceptional purity, Rexall Milk of Magnesia has almost none of that unpleasant, earthy taste. Well, say, the children will like that. And because it's Rexall, ma'am, you know it's laboratory tested. All you have to do is follow the tested instructions on the label. Well, from now on, I'm asking for Rexall Milk of Magnesia. At Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now, back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Well, Mr. Raymond R. Waldron had skipped, furniture and all. We thanked Pop, went downstairs, climbed into the squad car, and Walt checked in with the precinct. He put a tracer out on Waldron and learned that Lewis Hall and his henchmen were yet to be found. The coroner's report of the dead girl, Mary Bellman, confirmed the obvious. Death by 38, the slug having been found in the wall. Ballistics had a full report and were waiting for the gun to show up. It was six to an even that Louis Hall still had it and that it was mine. On the way over to Hall's nightclub, Walt told me that Hall had been going with a girl named Willis, Jean Willis. And he was a little surprised when I told him of Hall's recent interest in the late Mary Bellman. It seemed that Jean Willis and Louis had been an item for nearly a year. In fact, she was working as a headliner in his nightclub. <laughs> What a dime. Yeah. Better not leave the doors open too long. The smoke will run out and the walls will fall down. I'm going to see what I can find out about Louis Hall, Rick. You want to try looking up Gene Willis? Meet you back at the bar. Rick, I'm on duty. Well, who said you got a drink? You've got on shoes, but you're not walking. Oh. It's table, sir? No, thanks. Now, where can I find Gene Willis? You a friend? I might be. I'm afraid, Miss Willis. Oh, oh, my goodness. I dropped $10. So you did. It uh, looks a little messy. <laughs> I uh, hate to see you dirty your hands, sir, so I just keep it and you can go wash up. The huh? uh, washroom's right next to Miss Willis' dressing room. Right down that hall. I'll see that you're decorated by the Department of Sanitation. Who is it? Hey, who are you? Name's Diamond, honey. I'm a private detective. Good for you. I hope you're happy in your work. Now beat it. I'm looking for Lewis Hall. He's out. Uh, down the street somewhere. Having your initials tattooed on the soles of his feet, no doubt. Look, Wiseacre, blow or I'll yell and have a couple of boys show you the fastest way out of here. Honey, before you do, I think there's something you ought to know. Yeah? What? You open that pretty mouth of yours and you may end up swallowing a fist. Oh, yeah? You know a Mary Bellman... What? Know her? Yeah, she works here. She ain't showed up tonight. Something happened to her? What makes you say that? Wishful thinking. Oh. You used to be Louis Hall's girl, didn't you? Yeah, until she came along. Now, look, what is this? What's going on? What do you want Louis for? You really don't like Mary Bellman much, do you? I... Yeah. She's all right. What would you say if I told you someone put a bullet in her tonight? What? Where's Louis, Jean? Somebody took care of the little... Well, what do you know? Good. If Louie did it, I'm real happy. Because he found out what kind of a... No. I don't know where Louie is, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Now, get out of here. Okay, okay. But the law may be around to see you. Dandy. Now, beat it. Do me just one favor, will you, Jenny? What is it? Don't move. I want to remember you just as you are. Why, you crummy... <laughs> You moved. Well, I went back to the bar just in time to see Walt look around the room like a shoplifter on bargain day. Then he slipped the bartender a bill and downed a stiff belt with the speed of an alcoholic 30 seconds before prohibition was to set in. Good evening, Lieutenant. <laughs> that was a dirty trick. <laughs> I just saw the girl got nothing but a fast shuffle. I couldn't find out anything about Haller's boy either. Now, get your breath and let's get back down to the station and think about this thing. Let's go. (laughs) 
Hiya, Lieutenant. Hello, pink eyes. Huh? Oh. Anything on the dead girl? Uh, here's the report. Thanks. How are you, Shamus? Fine, notice, fine. Still under contract to the Museum of Natural History? That ain't very funny. Wait till they pick up your option and try to collect your head. Shut up, you two. Listen to this, Rick. This lab report says Mary Bellman was the one-time girlfriend of John Webb. Oh, the John Webb I sent up on an embezzlement rap eight years ago? The same. He got out a month ago. See, wasn't he suspected of being in on that Aetna payroll holdup? Yeah, but we never could prove that one on him. Mm. The dough was never recovered either. No, but the roll of bills and the dead girl's pocketbook checked with the numbers and the bills from that holdup. Walt, I'm getting an idea. When I sent Webb up, he was pretty unhappy. Made a lot of threats to me. You got the serial numbers from that holdup? Here's the whole list. Well, check him with this money. Your own doll? Okay, but I don't get it. Notice, did you find out anything on Raymond R. Waldron? Uh, the guy that was supposed to be the attorney? Yep. Uh, he ain't no attorney. He ain't even with the state bar, and I can't even find a Raymond R. Waldron in the phone book. Rick, where'd you get these bells? Well, they check. You bet they do. Where'd you get them? Raymond R. Waldron. Gave them to me when he hired me. Otis, go get a picture of John Webb. Right. You think Waldron and Webb are one and the same? Waldron had a beard and wore glasses. It's been eight years since I've seen Webb. Hey, it fits. If Webb is Waldron, he's got a motive. For one thing, he'd love to frame you. Yeah, but we're going to have a hard time proving Waldron is Webb without fingerprints. Not only that, we're going to have a hard time just finding him. Uh, here you are, Diamond. Thanks, Otis. Uh, give me a heavy lead pencil, Walt. Right here. Hmm? <laughs> Get him, some artist. <laughs> oh, shut up, Otis, shut up. Now, let's see. There's a beard. Put some glasses on him. Uh-huh. There you are. Well, Raymond R. Waldron. Or John Webb with glasses and a beard. I'll put out a gem. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Walt. I got an idea. Let's pull a real old stunt, huh? A real old stunt would be a cinch for us. Let the papers print a story that Mary Bellman is not dead. Webb must have made sure. Look, I didn't say that I was positive that Webb did the job. Louis Hall was standing with my gun in his hand. Gene Willis hated Mary Bellman for stealing her boy, Louis, and... Ah, we're loaded with suspects. Well, she did only have one bullet in her, and there is a possibility that she could have knocked herself off. Oh, stop sitting on your badge and call the papers. Say that Mary Bellman is in Bellevue in a serious condition. Due to an anonymous phone call, the police found her and rushed her to the hospital. I know, and she's expected to recover consciousness at any moment. Right. Uh, Otis, how would you look in a blonde wig? Huh? Come on, I'm going to put you to bed. Lieutenant! <coughs> Walt called in the reporters on the police beat and gave them the story. Then went over to Bellevue and set it up with the staff. All the rooms in one section of the second floor were emptied, and we took over 207. The boys came over from the station with the blonde wig, and Walt and I slapped it on Otis and tucked him away to go Betty by. A screen was put up in the back of the room, and Walt and I sat down behind it to wait. I've got six of our boys dressed as interns on this floor, and a policewoman on the switchboard. McCarthy is making like the night physician. If anyone tries to see Mary... Bless her little heart. He's to show him up. Tell them they can't stay long. The minute anyone shows, they'll call us on... Oh, that might be it. Yeah? A girl, Lieutenant. Nice looking. Wearing a big mink and carrying a handbag. Right. Girl. Jean Willis. Might be. Be here in a second. Keep well behind this screen. You can only stay a minute. I'll be outside. Thank you, Doctor. Mary... She's digging into her handbag. Let's take her. What? what? Let's have the money. Take your hands off of me. Hang on to her, Walt. What's the meaning of this? Ah, you hey. always carry a gun, Jean. <laughs> she was going to kill me. Who's that? That ain't Mary. <laughs> she was going to kill me, Lieutenant. Shut up, Otis, or I'll give her back the gun. You can't pin anything on me. I think we can, baby. Holy cow. More company. Yeah? You can't do this. Dear, shut up now. Yeah. Okay. More company? Yeah, Hall and his gorillas. Said they were around. Louie. Oh, no. Honey, I no. warned you. Keep it down, no. lady. I won't let him get caught. I don't want him to get caught. Shut her up. I don't want him to get caught. Sorry, honey, but I, I have don't want to. Him to get... <sighs> okay. <sighs> Lift her over behind the screen. All right. Yeah. There, there. All right, let me back there. Shh. Who's making noise? You can only stay a minute. Okay, Doc. You stay out here, Tony. Right, boy. 
Mary. <laughs> Mary, baby. I'll get the guy who done this. All right, Louie. Uh, who's there? The police and you're covered. Okay. Try anything and the guy in the bed will start shooting. The guy in the... A frame. Give me your gun. Then, Mary, she's... She's... She's really dead, Louie. I guess maybe I wish too much. I ain't smart. Here's your gun, Shamus. You had the right gun, all right, but the wrong boy. Here, Walt, give it the ballistics. We got Jean Willis over behind that screen. She came up here with some crazy idea of protecting you. Janie, she think I done it. Yeah, the crazy kid, she ain't got no... Oh, it's getting crowded. Yeah? What's going on? Trying to run down a killer, Louie. Okay. A guy just came in. Mm, wearing a beard? No, he asked what room Mary Bellman was in and then let some flowers walk down. Uh, oh. oh, we better get that girl out of here. Get her out in the hall. All right. Come on, honey. Eloy. Oh, yeah. Eloy, I didn't mean to... I'll talk. give you a hand, Lieutenant. Hey, Lieutenant. The fire escape. Somebody out there. Oh, Louie, I only wanted to uh, help you. Shh, shh. I... Quiet, Don't honey. move, anybody. Uh, Maybe without the light, he won't see us. Look out. He's going to shoot from there. Get that light. Who got him? I didn't even have it, time to get my gun out. I, I didn't. I, I was too scared. Well, I thought he'd at least get in the room. Lieutenant, you okay? Yeah. Keep everybody out of here. Where'd you get the other gun, Louie? I only give you yours. Remember, Shamus? Let's have that one, Louie. I done what I said I was going to do. I don't know who the guy is, but I guess he's the one to kill Mary. Can you see the guy, Rick? Is it Webb? Yeah. Alias Raymond R. Walton, attorney at law and very dead. Hmm. New outfit, Helen, baby? Uh huh. You like it? Make a silkworm lose his mind. <laughs> I fix some sandwiches. Thought you could eat them in here in the study. Oh, beats the kitchen. How can I see what I'm eating? A moth would crack up if he had to land by one lousy candle. Thought it was kind of romantic. Soft lights, music. Oh, honey, honey, honey. My rear old stomach has been neglected all day. Food should make it happy. I hope so. Hard day. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, what's this? Mm. Oh, very toothy. Peanut butter and caviar. You, you make them? Of course. No... Yes? Walt, Helen, right there. Feeding his face. Wait a minute, Walt. No. Here's the way it breaks down. Walter or Webb decided to kill three birds with one stone. Oh, the big pig. He wanted you for sending him up. He wanted Mary Bellman because she was blackmailing him. Seems she threatened to tell the police that he was the one who got that payroll. Oh, that's why she asked for an envelope. She thought I was bringing the payoff. Yeah. Well, Louis Hall was the third bird... For stealing Webb's girl while he was doing time. That's it. You've been a living doll. What do you eat? I think this one's cheese and liverwurst. <laughs> How are you going to sing? I haven't thought about it. Me, 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 me. <laughs> You'll never make it. Don't bet on it. I will bet on it, a double sawbuck. I know you haven't got it, but you're on. hoop de doo hoop de doo I hear a poker and my troubles are through. Hoop de do, hoop de dee. This kind of music is like heaven to me. Hoop de do, hoop de do. It's got me higher than a kite. Hand me down my soup and fish. I am gonna get my wish. Hoop de do in it tonight. When there's a trombone playing, I get a thrill. I always will When there's a concertina I always smile Cause that's my style When there's a fiddle in the middle And it really is a riddle Plays the tune so sweet that I could die Lead me to the floor And hear me yell for more Cause I'm a hoop-de-doin' kind of guy Hoop-de-doo hoop to do. I hear a polka and my troubles are through. Hoop to do, hoop to dee. This kind of music is like heaven to me. Hoop 
de doo loop de doo It's got me higher than a car. Hand me down my soup and fish. I am gonna get my wish. Hoop de doo in it tonight. Now, oh, honey, during that phone. All right, Fatty, what do you got to say now? Didn't think I could sing with a mouthful of liverwurst. <laughs> it was worth the 20. I bet you feel awful. No, but I'm sure glad I wasn't eating spaghetti. Why? Well, I strained so much on that last note, I would have knitted a T-shirt for my tonsils. Dick Powell will be back in just a moment. And now, once more, here's your Rexall family druggist. It's the time of year for a friendly warning about sunburn. Remember that overexposure may cause serious and painful burns. But in case you do get a sunburn, I want you to know about Rexall Gypsy Cream. You'll actually be amazed at the immediate cooling, soothing relief you get with Rexall Gypsy Cream. And what's more, it's not a messy ointment, but a quick-drying, greaseless liquid, easy to apply, harmless to close. Ask for Rexall Gypsy Cream at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <whistles> Ladies and gentlemen, last year a great part of America's security went up in smoke. When traveling this summer, you can guard against forest fires by following these few simple rules. Crush out all cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two before throwing them away. Drown all campfires twice before leaving them. And always find out the law before using fire in wooded areas. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Good night, everyone. This program was transcribed. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this same time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. For the woman in ten with sensitive skin... There's Caranome hand cream. Statistics show that one woman in ten has an extra sensitive, extra tender skin. And for that woman... There's Caranome hand cream. For like all Caranome beauty aids... Caranome hand cream is hypoallergenic. Pure, mild, safe for most sensitive skins. It softens, beautifies, protects. Remember, for the woman in ten with sensitive skin... There's Caranome hand cream. Only one of Caranome's beauty aids designed especially for women with sensitive skin. Ask for Caranome at Rexall drugstores everywhere. <laughs>